Pro Skater 1. Uh, still using Bob Bernquist. I uh, got the ribbon board, the trucks, and the purple wheels. We are going to attempt the mall at New York. Um, I already did get one of the tapes uh, by accident, um, so we will be... I just wanted to play the level before I jumped into it, see if I remembered it. Um, but I also wanted to bring up that I am playing on an emulator, um, which is something that is now changing due to a recent lawsuit by uh, Nintendo, one of the most famous emulator sites. Uh, New Paradise uh, recently shut down all of its emulators and uh, everything that it had in store because of the lawsuit that was at hand. And I know this affects a lot of people because a lot of us, for older games, don't have the money or the ability to find these anymore. So we use emulators, and that's what keeps the, uh, I think, a lot of games in hands of gamers. I think a lot of us play it because we don't have access to this, or if we are trying to find it, our local uh, retro shop doesn't have the game in or something like that. Tony Hawk being a very popular game, I don't think that is really the issue. I think just uh, it's easier to me run it off my computer. And then, uh, just for example, this is how that level ends. You just end up at the end. I saved my career. But I think emulation is very important in video games, and a lot of people don't talk about it, especially for the older um, retro games such as like a Sega Genesis or the Super Nintendo, uh, or even just the NES. Um, a lot of us are, I know I grew up past that generation, I know that wasn't my system, I was more on the tail end of the Nintendo 64 and Playstations. and. It's just interesting to see how much games are preserved, um, almost like in a library, when you have them emulated. It gives the opportunity for people who would have never had the chance to play a game to, uh, to go ahead and experience something of the past. And I think that was really good. Um, now, in terms of like, well, aren't you taking money from these companies because it's their games and everything? Um, some of these games uh, are no longer produced or made, um, and there's no place you can even find them to buy them. So, <clears throat> it's really not taking away money if you can't, if the company itself is not making money off of the game. So I want to see something on this one. Uh, I like how it has the full front and back version of the game on here, so it has Apocalypse and then even tells you how to play it on the back. And then we're gonna end it right there. Okay, so I think the last tape I have to get is the... is the pro score of 30,000. There's a spot near the elevators, well I will milk this for that tape. But like I said, yeah, like a lot of the, uh, uh, like I caught the tail end of the Sega Genesis, and like I loved playing Golden Axe and Streets of Rage, or Final Fight, and <clears throat> nowadays I won't have the ability to play those games uh, unless I go out and find a, uh, a, pretty much a reseller of the old systems, buy the system, hopefully they have the games I want, and then play it that way. And yeah, that's... It's definitely a possibility. That's definitely something that I can find. I know, especially in um, my neck of the woods, I do have a person who sells retro, and then I can go into Portland and find more retro games there. But I think that to fully target a site when you are not providing the resources to those games, especially Nintendo. Nintendo has the virtual store where they could provide either like their monthly subscription to access all of these games through an emulator, or make them super discounted because, yeah, it's hard to spend money on games that uh, that you don't really know what you're getting into. Emulation also allowed you a, like a try it before you buy it type situation, which I think is beneficial for the gaming community as a whole. I think that more you expose everybody to different types of video games, the more that they're going to find out what they like and what they don't like. I know I've played plenty of games that uh, 
I tried out and then was like, wow, this is straight garbage, but that's, I, I think that's what I miss Blockbuster for then, like, Blockbuster used to have the game rental, uh, pass where you could rent two games a week and then bring them back and you could get two new games, and it's like, that was the beginning of, like, things such as, like, Gamefly and everything like that, I need to land that, nice, got 30,000 points right at the very end. save the career. So that's why I think it's important, like, that's why I like using emulators on my uh, PC to play old school games, is just so that I have the ability to try out things that I wouldn't peaceably play, or play childhood relics such as this game. And then we're, I liked how this game had the uh, competition, uh, so it's pretty much just a minute of free skating, you do what you think is going to be best. It's all pretty much high score rigged, so it's pretty funny. So I like doing... I think I have to get 20,000 points and I can pretty much end my run and be top of the leaderboard. Uh, I know watching people like speed run this game, they have like the perfect line and then you can just back out instantly. Switch Madonna. I know my lines are the worst and not the cleanest, but it's just what makes this game fun. And the funny thing is looking at all of like, the old brands and sponsors like Etnies, um, <coughs> like Mark Echo even had a game a while back that was like Rising Up, which was all about uh, graffiti culture, which I thought was really cool, I remember playing that game. Alright, let's see what I got. Ooh, 91.1. Puts me first place. Let's try that again. Let's try to change it up this round and not just do everything in the hole. Do more of a clean run. And by clean run, I mean instantly fuck up. But I did like it that this, uh, this version provided so much different options of what you could do with 540, uh, by 4360 flip, which is crazy. And just having the, like this kicker in the middle of these two half pipes really just provides a different flow of the game. As you know what, I realized I'm not that good unless I'm skating in the half pipe. So let's go skate in the bowl instead, which is the exact same thing as the half pipe. But I get to pretend it is. But yeah, the whole gap system, trying to find out where everything was, trying to unlock as much as possible. It made this game feel really good in itself. See, and then sometimes you just lose yourself in your spinning. Ooh, dropped out to third place. Alright, need to pick it back up. But I like that about this game. It's like, once again, you could jump at rails from any angle and you could pretty much latch on. Start off with some of that. Go backflip, nice. Madonna. Oh. The hard part about when you take the foot off the board and moves like that, it's like I don't actually know where my rotation is, and I could get better at learning how this game works in that sense. Oh. See, like gaps like that, I didn't know were a possibility, and then another gap to a gap. So it's really cool that just the exploration in this game and how much that you just have to piece together yourself and figure out, oh, does that work? I'm trying to do the special just so I can get that extra amount of points. And then I'm definitely got first place. Let's end it out with the switch. Benny Kata as I each hit. And then high score. Boom. 184. Just barely in first place. Getting that gold medal, save the career, and I think that's where we're going to end it for here, we will be going to downtown, downtown Minneapolis after it, we did Skate Park Chicago, and we ended in the mall in New York, so until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh,